Hey, welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. Um, today, uh, we are going to tell you why you can forget about the last gas, uh, last three gas laws we just taught you. You no longer need Charles Gay-Lussac's and uh, Boyle's laws anymore because we are going to roll them all up into the combined gas law. Now, I say that a little jokingly, but, um, you know, you, you, should, you, you, should, you should still understand conceptually what each of those laws do. But in terms of solving math problems, you don't need to memorize all three of those anymore. You can use what's called the combined gas law. Now, one of the things you can help with a little trick I learned a long time ago is the PTV pivot. You just got to remember to put the letters in the right order. And what you can do is you can pinch any one of those letters, P, T, or V, and then, uh, and then you, you have two variables left. And then uh, you just simply lift the pivot up if the variable is going up, or you you know you roll it down if the variable is going down. So, for instance, if I were to pinch a V there and raise P, then T would raise also. And that's you know again Guy Lussac's law of temperature and pressure. And if pressure went down, temperature would go down. And you can do the same thing: pinch temperature, pressure goes up, volume goes down, and that's Boyle's law, et cetera, et cetera. So the PTV pivot is a nice conceptual way to figure out if things should go up and down. But anyway, what we can do also is we can take all the gas laws that we've talked about and combine them into one law. So here they all come, dun, 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 and then we really get them all combined. P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. It's the same exact thing as the three gas laws, um, but we just roll them all into one big equation. And if you hold any one of them constant, you get one of the other gas laws we've talked about. Hold volume constant? Okay, well, that's Guy Lusset. Um, a hold pressure constant? Well, that's Charles. And hold temperature constant, you derive boils. And so you really don't need to remember those other three basic gas laws anymore. Um, you should conceptually understand what each of them uh, represent, but mathematically you can just remember this one now and then derive the other ones from there. And this does allow us to open up six variable uh, problems, though, which gets pretty exciting. So wow, <laughs> it looks, probably looks pretty scary there. Um, so take a minute uh, or two and see if you can solve that. Hey, welcome back. So here's your relevant information. Um, notice P1, V1, T1, P2, V2, T2. Again, the way you identify this is you've got some kind of you know changing conditions. And so um, uh, I made this kind of tricky. I gave you a lot of variables that you had to convert. Um, obviously, the first thing you should do is get temperature to Kelvin. Don't forget about that. All right. And then I decided to change my pressure over to kilopascals. You didn't have to. You could do whatever you wanted to. Um, you could take, take them both and change them to something else. But I decided I'd just get them to kilopascals. Remember that as long as you have absolute variables, it doesn't really matter which one uh, you use as long as you're consistent throughout your problem because they're just going to cancel out anyway. And so what I did is I used my conversions of atmospheres to kilopascals. You can jump back to the pressure lesson if you forget how to convert between pressure units. And so I end up with um, uh, 128.4 kilopascals, which makes sense given uh, that ratio in atmospheres. And now uh, what really makes this easier is if you solve for the variable. So I'm solving for T2. And so the, the quick, dirty way of doing that is since T2 is going on the other side of the equal sign, you take everything that was already over there and flip it and just bring it over. And so we end up with P2, V2, T1 over P1, V1. And then you get to just plug everything in. This is the beauty of solving for the variable. Learn to love this. And so now look what happens. Kilopascals cancels out, liters cancels out, and we're left with the unit we're looking for, which is Kelvin. Fantastic. Um, now, the thing with the combined gas law is it's going to be much tougher to guess if the answer should be going up and down because you have more variables changing. Uh, you know, so they could be competing. One, one could be forcing a change downward and the other one could be forcing a change upward. So this gets much trickier to kind of use common sense to figure out where your answer is going. Anyway, in this case, uh, we ended up with 717 Kelvin. Um, so there you go. So that's the combined gas law. That's an example of it. And uh, so we'll... Uh, Next time, we're going to show you Avogadro's law and actually show you why uh, there's a super combined gas law that no one will teach you except for me. And so with that little cliffhanger, uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.